Reverend Pearl Amoa is a past beauty queen who had so much to give to the fashion industry, both home and abroad. Having a memorable childhood, she always wanted to be an elegant lady who will travel all over the world considering her dream profession. My name is Pearl Amwa, Miss Ghana Universe 1996, Mrs. Ghana International 2015, and was an international model, now a Lady Reverend. Growing up as a child, I mean, with regards to what I was exposed to, what I had always wanted to become um, was actually an aerostess. Um, because every time I see them dressed and the way they go, you know, they do their things. I always admired so much that I had wanted, and I know that I could travel to different places in the world. So I had always wanted to be an Elsters. Growing up also, I think it was around, this was around secondary school, the opportunity came uh, to become a model. And I hopped on it because I was like, this could be another avenue for me to get that access, like to be exposed. So you know, dreams and aspirations and um, growing up, like I said, the environment is very important. Um, I, I didn't grow up in, in, in such a privileged home, but my mother, who is very God-fearing, will always hammer and make sure that I'm well grounded in order not to, you know, deviate from the lifestyle that she had planned for me. But of course, my mind was this, Air hostess where I will travel the world. So when the modeling came, I, I hopped on it. And, you know, from one, one thing led to another. Uh, from being a model, I became a Miss Ghana. I became, you know, like a, a Miss Ghana Universe. I became uh, Mrs. International. And through all this, you know, a lot of things has happened. Um, so much, so much has happened. Beautiful Pearl's fashion dream began as she made it her goal to make a statement with her astonishing and beautiful body features. The big picture for me started with modeling. I was um, on my way to school when I was scouted by these two people on the street. And I guess I was just walking, but they just stopped by and they said, wow, we love the way you walk. I said, what do you mean? Um, I was probably 13 years old then, very young. So they said, oh, we, we can teach you how to model. I said, what's that? So they explained to me and I said, wow, that's not bad. So I had to look for money then, of course, to be trained. What I realized was that, you see, everyone has gifts. And I'm not surprised that even as a young girl, I was always thinking of becoming an Elstis. What I saw that I wanted to become, you know, the, mod the modeling also sort of fall in line with the same thing, the same you know, because I, I was quite slender, um, tall, uh, lanky. So I started the, 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 the cut working. It went very well. My first, my first uh, work that I did was, um, I think, Motion. It's, it's called Motion, Motion 94. So that's way back. That was my first fashion show. And it was with all these big names, you know. It was with Kalsum Sinar, you know, those, the top models then. And I was the youngest amongst them. I was 14 years old when I got on that show. And um, yeah, everybody was like, wow, you know, who is this, you know, beautiful young girl who... So my first hit was a big hit and it started. So since then, whenever there's a show, they'll call me to be part of it. And then Miss Ghana uh, came where I participated in, in, a, in a Miss Northern region. Now, during the, when I started the modeling, there was one fashion house, one woman, Margaret Foriata, that took me up as a model. So, and I thank God for that woman because I believe if she had not been there for me, if God had not placed her there to pick me up, I would have probably ended up corrupting very early. Modeling is a work for the world. No matter how you want to paint it or so the exposure to be exploited and used and abused was there. But this woman was there, picked me up as a model. So what she did was to make sure that, you know, she kept me busy. I'm always in her showroom fitting for clothing. And she was an international designer. 
I got the opportunity to travel with her to South Africa, to Paris, to Milan. So I, I mean, God really had been there for me, I'll say, from the beginning. And I'm also someone, the way that, because of the way my mom brought me up, I'm always very careful not to do the contrary of what the word of God says. But I was in there, I was exposed. When the Miss Ghana opportunity came, I embarked on it. I became Miss Northern Region. This was in, I think, uh, 1995, because it was 96 that I got the opportunity to be Miss Ghana Universe, and then I traveled to the US. That was an amazing experience. I went straight to Las Vegas. I thought the whole of America was like that. The lights, you know, beautiful, gorgeous. I met all these amazing people. I mean, I was like, this, this is it. And they nicknamed, they nicknamed me Baby Naomi. So right after that, I decided to scout, you know, go uh, like scout for a modeling agency. And I was referred to New York City. So that's where I was based. I did um, Metropolitan Modeling Agency. I did um, Elite. Um, I did Ford. Ford was amazing. And that was when I met Alec Wick, the, the popular top, yeah, supermodel. That was where I met her. We were in the same, sharing the same room. We were best friends. So thinking of some of the amazing brands that I work with, um, I work with uh, Roberto Cavalli, I work with uh, Vivian Westwood, I work with um, Oil of Olay, uh, Black Opal. Uh, I did some, I did, you know, some, some showroom stuff for Spiegel and I also did a catalog, I did a, a catalog Spiegel. I work with Dewey Nix, one of the most popular, you know, like editorial photographers. I work with, um, uh, what do you call it, Peter Lindbergh. In spite of all the exposure, love and opportunities she won from many fashion moguls, the fame, money and international recognitions with great business deals, Pearl has always known and recognized God for her blessings and never wants to do contrary to the word of God. Growing up, I've always seen myself as someone who really didn't belong to the world I was in, but I could never put my mind on what exactly I'm supposed to do. Look, everything I put my hands on, I did interior design and architecture in the process of fashion modeling in the States. You know, I excel in everything I do by the grace of God. Um, I, I was able to bud designers, you know, I did the TV, sh the, the TV show, um, Soul Project, Queen of the Runway, it was excellent. So the truth is, and then um, there was a time where a prophecy came that there is a, a God is going to use me for a time to come. I had even forgotten about that. But my whole mind, my whole life, all I think about is that I am born for fashion and fashion is what I'm supposed to do. I've been born again three times. The first time was when I was 12 years. I grew up in La, and uh, the La Bethel, there was a crusade and I was there. And um, when they did the altar call, I went, when I went there, I always remember this image so much. It's like the moment we got there, then the, the, this is like showers, showers from heaven. Just So I raised my head up to the heavens. And I don't know, but there was something that happened that day. I was young, too young. I can't fathom, but I know something happened that day because every time I think of the first time I became born again, my mind goes zoom straight there. The way the, the, the heaven opened and the showers and there were other people, but my experience was very different. You know, and then second time was, um, I think, in, in 2000 and 2006, yes, 2006, I had gone through a lot, Last, like transition in the fashion modeling and, you know, I, I even started this um, fashion house, it was called Joseph Pearl in New York, it was right in Soho, right by Amani Gucci and all those things, all those things sort of dwindled down and, and then my fashion career also sort of started going down and I felt like I was yearning for something more inside, like something was missing. A few years back, God blessed me with a baby girl. But I noticed before my daughter turned to it, the few words that she had, she lost them. So six years, seven, she was still not talking. And then I received the shock of my life. There were times that I prayed to God that if I have to die today, God should take me up, you know, with my child. So that then I don't leave people with that problem or that challenge. There's also that fear. 
What happens to this child when you die? I found Christ and when I found him, I was smoking then, I was, you know, I was in the fashion world. This is 19, uh, 2006. So, so I was like, there was this emptiness inside me. But through prayer, I realized that God, God sort of took me from the world. So that was when the transition started. And then, of course, I got married in 2007. And uh, what happened was that you know, I, I've, I, I was sort of sheltered um, with the word of God and I started growing in, in, in the word of God. But again, in that process, I fell again because, the, well, there was a falling away. We had all those false prophets and all those things. That was when I started, you know, uh, the, the fashion house and, and, and the other stuff. I did, I started a, a, a fashion outlet at the Junction Mall, an amazing fashion concept. Everything was going so well. I mean, that shop you can clearly see that i was going to just be a multi-millionaire in, in in less than a year everything was just going so well but something happened there was an encounter her final encounter with christ jesus brought a lot of light into her life i met somebody and when i met this person it was sort of like i had to choose good instead of bad and i chose the good because men were coming to me with money you may ask, oh, but you were married. I was separated for some time. Men were coming with money. It was the time, you know, we just entered COVID. It was those times, I'm talking about now, I'm on the third born again, how I became the born again the third time. So, you know, we had people that are married that still had men that are supporting them. We just came from that era. And I know people are still doing it. But so I had men approaching me with money to support my business, to open it out, to have franchises all over. But this person that I met actually was sort of a blockage for me to do that. Not that he tells me don't do it or anything, but I started hearing from God, strangely. And I started saying things, it was like more like prophecy. So then I realized that hmm, something is going on. So gradually, as I decided to block the world, and to walk in, in God's ways, you know what happened? That was when the thing started. I found myself being fine-tuned to who God wants me to be. I even had to cut that person that I thought was the one, the self. I cut them, I just became so, I just deleted everybody from my life. Business crashed, financially horrible. I felt sick. I was diagnosed with cancer. My mother died. All this happened within a year of my, my, the third time I became born again. Pearl accepted his presence in her life in spite of all the challenges that rose up against her at the peak of her career. Somebody told me, there's this lady pastor we want you to see. When I went to the lady pastor, she told me that, woman, there's a calling on your head. There are many souls chasing you. You can choose your life or you can choose money. So you choose, if you choose your life, God has a way of restoring. But if you choose the money, you are not going to be guaranteed being alive. I was still sick then. So that was when I said, I will choose the calling. So when I chose the calling, I, I just believe that God is mirac miraculously going to clear everything. Okay. And I started the journey that way. Now, I had traveled. After I was ordained the reverend minister, I didn't take three months and I was ordained the reverend minister. Um, I traveled. It was during my travel that Holy Spirit started revealing himself to me. And I didn't understand. But I always use this word. Those that he called, he had already predestined and he also justified them. So that's the word that always comes to my mind that I have been predestined for whatever is coming. And the truth is that Whilst, whilst um, I was out there, I had traveled. I knew death was at my door. But then something, not something, the Holy Spirit kept telling me that you can live and you can survive in this flesh if only you will listen and obey. I didn't know I had cancer then. 
it was I was there when I was told my mother had died. So I came home, stayed with my mom for a month in the hospital. She died. A week later, I was diagnosed with cancer. Now, when they told me that, I said, ah, Holy Ghost preserved me on my sick bed when I thought I was even dying there. So even if here, they say, they say that I've got cancer. Well, I, I haven't really encountered Jesus to the level that I will know what Jesus will do. You know, it's, my calling has been in stages. No man has taught me anything. I've been taught everything straight from heaven. God reveals himself to me through dreams. I have been fighting battles in dreams. I have seen demons. I have fought demons. You may say, this woman, what is she talking about? With all the difficult times she faced, the Holy Spirit kept her focused and strong when she was weak. I had to go through because I believe whatever my calling was about, it was the only, this is, I mean, this was the way God wanted to bring me up to be able to stand for whatever, for whatever project he has for me. They said I have to do chemotherapy. I said no, because I've heard many stories about chemo. People don't survive. So a few days to the chemo, in the, in the end, family came in and said, you have to do it. Your mom is dead. Your father is not there. No one is there to, to take decisions for you. We also want you alive. So go through the chemo. I said, fine. It was on my sick chemo bed that Holy Ghost also started revealing himself to me strongly. Why? Because sometimes I die. I died several times. When I say I die, it's out of body experience. But God always puts my spirit back in my body because of the things I'm about to deal with. In this, we are in the end time. In this end time. When you follow or when you look at uh, the time, from the time I started uh, giving my messages, I called them prophecies. I started prophesying about end time 2018. I have never changed my story. And today I still say we are in the end time. So God sustained me on my, on my sick bed through the spirit. And after, after chemo, I had to go through the surgery. God told me I was healed because the tumor shrunk in the breast. The tumor shrunk, but I still felt like, oh, because they said I should take out the breast, I'll take it out. It was during the surgery, after the surgery, that there was, there was someone who actually knew me. He was in the surgery room. Uh, he was actually in the same ward with me. So I think in my uh, unconsciousness, she overheard that the thing actually was not there. So I said, ah, I should have just trusted my God. Indeed, it was a good decision Pearl took. For the Holy Spirit has restored her health physically, mentally, and psychologically. The calling has not been easy because I remember right before my ordination, there was this prophetic service. And then I was called and then I was told that I've been offered a golden seat to dine with princes, the kings and the chiefs of this world. But I've turned my back and I've chosen a different kingdom. Because of that, what to eat, I will not get. And I will be just neglected and I'll become so old, like they will make sure that I will not even be appealing. So this prophecy came. Now, from everything I've gone through, what I've known, and I remember this words from my mother all the time, Pearl, or you say, Ache, God is your father. Everything you need, look up to God. That's how my mom brought me up. The transition wasn't easy because I had to go through starving sometimes i have to i mean my mom wasn't there i had no one to really talk to i have three children they're they're very young they don't understand what mommy is going through and uh my friends were no longer there because they don't understand why because they think i should be half and half why am i saying it has to be strict like that because the Bible says so. Very interesting. You know, I heard people saying that, oh, let's see how long she'll last. But majority of those people congratulated me. But I know, I mean, I've, I know human beings at the back of their mind. Because now 
they've seen how far I have come. They have seen miracles, God is, what that God is doing through me. And I see them distancing themselves rather, instead of them coming close. So it means that the first init the initial congratulations really was like, let's see how far you go. I see life as a process. There are things I did in the past that if I knew what I knew now, I would have done better, especially in the modern days. But then God allowed it because his word says that he allows the good and the bad to work together for those who love him. So as I sit here now, I don't regret my past. I don't regret my past because now there are, I have, uh, what do you call it? Groups that I man manage, um, they are, they are, it's fellowship, you know, advocates, kingdoms, you know, different, different groups. And these are all souls. As I was prophesied in 2018, that they are souls, they are, these are all souls. And when I speak to them, they are excited because of the word, the revelations, Holy Ghost gives me to give them. So, and during, when I was in the world, I was always organizing events, organizing groups like models doing this event. So I believe God has made me go through all those experiences, though he had hidden this part from me. So that I'll be able to manage his flock in this time. So yes, I don't regret anything that has happened in my past. Even the relationships I've gone through, I'm able to teach people, to tell people, it's okay if that has happened to you because God has a better plan for you. After Pearl's encounter with Christ, she makes a bold decision of trying to help rescue the perishing by evangelizing in places such as market centers and public transport to win souls for Christ. God has been so good to me. When I was called and right after surgery, what the Holy Ghost told me was that start, with, uh, start witnessing in, in, the, in the local buses. That's the trotro. So I didn't understand, but I started. I will go and then I'll tell them, God says, seek him first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, Matthew, uh, Matthew 6, 33, and everything else will be added unto you. And even uh, 31st December, because I started witnessing in the, in the Trotro from, I think, November, uh, December. So immediately, immediately after surgery, I was very busy on it. Um, or even before surgery, I think I started, when chemo ended. Do you know that when, um, when I was told to do this, then I was told to also evangelize in the market. So I go to a marketplace. Like I see a group of the people that are selling, I teach them, I tell them about Jesus, Jesus is coming and God is going to help them and everything. But do you know that in, inside me, I'm like, God, I need a church that I can be with. Even the place I was ordained, Holy Spirit told me that that's not where I'm supposed to. He said, go out there and do this. And I listened. Do you know that just two, three months after being on evangelism, then the COVID happened and then we were locked down. And since then, church it's not the same anymore and church is not going to be the same anymore because church age is over we are now in the kingdom age and what is happening now is that what he told me to do preaching in the trotro and then he would tell me take their numbers start a group he, he told me so i did that i started groups and even the people that um, i harvested uh, i call i always call them harvest that joined the group they were also some of them were teachers so i told them start your own groups and start nourishing them so as I sit here, over 40, 50 group, uh, groups that I'm part of, I evangelize and there are others who are also invited. There's prayer meeting every day, Bible study every day. We are teaching them the pure truth. I love, I really love the WhatsApp prayer. It's like you are dealing with spirits. It's not the seeing the people anymore. So I encourage you, focus on your salvation now because in Chebiara, not too long, rapture will happen. Rapture will happen. Hold on to God. Hold on to your faith. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. Pearl has since then left all her glitz and glam to pursue God's calling upon her life. Just as you know, every worthy court needs support. 
and Dominion TV has been doing this for some time now, Christian-based television that seeks to power the youth with the message of Christ, take over the whole of Africa. And I believe this is a worthy cause. So if you want to support financially or you're a brand and want to get on board, just visit the website www.dominiontv.net or you can contact the numbers on the screen. Thank you.